Mary Shelley's iconic novel, Frankenstein, has captivated readers for centuries with its tale of scientific ambition, creation, and the consequences of playing God. The popularity of the novel has not only inspired generations of readers, but has also sparked a number of adaptations across various forms of media, from literature to film to television and beyond. Frankenstein has been reimagined and reinvented, each adaptation offering its unique interpretation of Shelley's iconic story. In this video, we will explore the original and three notable Frankenstein adaptations, delving into how they brought Mary Shelley's story to life in new and captivating ways. From the iconic portrayal of the creature by Boris Karloff in James Whale's 1931 Frankenstein film, to the more modern ideas discussed in Bomani J. Story's 2023 film that has shed light onto our understanding of race and equality. We will discuss the diverse range of adaptations that gave new meaning to Mary Shelley's original masterpiece. By examining these adaptations, we will not only appreciate the creative approaches taken by authors and filmmakers, but also gain insights into how Frankenstein's themes and messages have evolved over time. Furthermore, we will explore the contextual and historical background surrounding the adaptations and how this may have played a role in changing the themes and ideas while simultaneously recognizing any noticeable differences in the films. Before delving into the work and adaptations of Frankenstein, it's fundamental to understand the concept of new historicism. What this means is instead of viewing these works from an objective and isolated standpoint, we will instead put emphasis on the idea that meaning is constructed through historical and cultural circumstances, dependent on personal and outside factors. By taking into consideration any historical, cultural, and personal factors surrounding a work, new historicism can bring out deeper meanings that may be embedded within the text whether consciously or subconsciously made by the author or director. Now that that's out of the way, we can begin. Starting off with the original. When analyzing Mary Shelley's 1818 Frankenstein through the lens of new historicism, we can take into consideration the year it was published. The early 19th century was a time of great scientific discovery and technological advancement, with society being in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. Mary Shelley's influence by the debates and controversies of her time, including the tension between science and religion, the ethics of experimentation, and questions regarding whether certain things were morally ethical. One of the central themes in Frankenstein is the pursuit of scientific innovation and its consequences. Victor Frankenstein's creation of the monster can be seen as a metaphor for the ambition of scientific and industrial progress during the Industrial Revolution. Victor's desire to conquer death and create life through scientific means reflects the era's fascination with scientific advancements and the idea of humans conquering the unknown and nature. The theme is mentioned a multitude of times through the novel, Victor Frankenstein almost always stating these conditions. Take for instance in chapter 3, page 23, during the scene of when Victor Frankenstein is discussing the days which led up to his dreaded creation, he states, quote, Learn from me, if not by my percepts, at least by my example, how dangerous is the acquirement of knowledge, and how much happier that man is who believes his native town to be the world, than he who aspires to become greater than his nature will allow." End quote. This reflects the dangers of unchecked ambition and persistence towards forbidden knowledge, warning the reader of the consequences associated with exceeding the natural limitations of humanity. We can see a visible connection of anxiety and fear towards the idea of stepping into the unknown. The idea mirrors back to the era Mary Shelley lived in. To give insight, according to a biography article published by the University of Colorado Boulder titled Biography of Mary Wollstone Shelley, it states that, quote, Mary Shelley was exposed almost daily to Godwin's extensive acquaintance among the London intelligentsia. Scientists like Humphrey Davy and her father's bosom friend William Nicholson, the two foremost experimenters with galvanic electricity in the early years of the 19th century, would later have a noticeable impact on the writing of Frankenstein, end quote. Mary Shelley was no stranger to scientific ideas. Her home life was marked by intellectual stimulation at a very young age, thanks to her father, William Godwin, and lover, Percy Bysshe Shelley. Mary Shelley's personal experience, upbringings, and historical background give more meaning to her work on Frankenstein. These ideas are echoed in her writing and gave social commentary to the state of the world during the time she published Frankenstein. 
After Mary Shelley's original novel was published, it was only a matter of time before the medium of film, which had recently emerged in 1895, would seek to bring this iconic tale to life on the silver screen. The popularity of Frankenstein made it a source of inspiration for filmmakers at the time, eventually leading up to its 1931 theatrical adaptation of Frankenstein by James Wales. Viewing the theatrical adaptation of Frankenstein through a new historicism lens gives us context clues on perhaps a deeper meaning and interpretation of the movie. Important to take note of is that the theme of dangers, of ambition, and playing God are still very much prevalent in the film. The monster itself and his actions can be viewed as reflecting the fears and angst of society surrounding scientific and technological advancements at the time. However, the presence of social disparity and power dynamic is emphasized even more in the theatrical release. This is no mistake. There is juxtapositioning of higher powers leading the weak and powerless more present in the film than Mary Shelley's novel. Using the literary theory of new historicism, the time the movie was made gives the viewer reason to believe that this perhaps had social commentary on the economic and political state of the U.S. James Whale was born in a lower working class family. According to a biography written on him, quote, the sixth of seven children, Whale grew up poor and was forced to abandon his education in order to go to work and help support his large family, end quote. Eventually, James Whale began to hone in on his talent and passion for theater, which then led to an opportunity to direct his first play titled Journey's End. This milestone marked the beginning of a series of fortunate events. The play gained appraisal by critics and audience alike. The play was converted to a film and gained even more popularity. Quote, Following the success of Journey's End, James Whale was signed by Universal Studios and given the wartime drama Waterloo Bridge, considered by many to be the finest adaptation of Robert E. Sherwood's play of the same name. Waterloo Bridge came in on time and under budget, winning Whale his choice of which Universal property he would direct next. Whale chose wisely indeed when he requested Frankenstein based on the novella by Mary Shelley. It was here that he would direct Frankenstein in 1931. It was also around this time that the U.S. was undergoing the events of the Great Depression. The economy was in a state of crisis, with widespread unemployment, bank failures, and decrease of businesses. Americans faced poverty, and the disparity gap in terms of wealth only increased. The film portrays a contrast between the privileged characters such as Dr. Frankenstein and his family and the impoverished individuals of the village. This division reflects the economic disparities of the Great Depression era, where the gap between the rich and poor widened significantly. Many scenes depict the quote-unquote upper class sheltering themselves and fleeing the monster, whereas the lower class is shown out in the open, being terrorized by the creature. Take, for instance, this scene in which Frankenstein's family is in their living space. Our son to the house of Frankenstein. Here's a jolly good healthy young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Here, hi. Give, give the servants some champagne. This stuff's wasted on them. Well, 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 well. Uh, go on, mop it up, mop it up. It'll do you good. House of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein. Now then, now be off about your business. <laughs> and compare it to this scene where a father and daughter are sharing a heartfelt moment minutes before disaster. You stay here, Maria. I'll just take a look at my traps. Now we'll go to the village and have a grand time, huh? It won't be long yet. Oh, no, no. Franz goes by, tell him I'll be back soon, hmm? Daddy, won't you stay and play with me a little while? I'm too busy, darling. You stay and play with the kitty, huh? Bye, Daddy. Goodbye. Be a good girl now. Come on, kitty.
The film presents Dr. Frankenstein and his family as part of the upper class, residing in a spacious living area and enjoying a life of comfort. They are shown surrounded by servants catering to their every need, whereas the village scenes in the film depict a more desolate atmosphere, highlighting the realities faced by the working class during the Great Depression. The film captures the despair that affected the lives of many during this time of economic hardship. Although the film may not be entirely revolving around the theme of disparity in social class, there is no denying the circumstances had nothing to do with the underlying message regarding the socioeconomic state of the population at the time. It's just as, if not, more prevalent in the film than the book. James Will's quick transition from poor childhood upbringings to fame and fortune working for Universal Studios in Hollywood gives him insight on both sides of the spectrum pertaining to social class. In this adaptation of Frankenstein, we see how both the director's personal life as well as circumstantial world events at the time affected his work on the film. New historicism demonstrates how this adds or slightly alters the meaning due to adding another person's perspective. The next adaptation of Frankenstein takes on a more satirical approach to the horror genre and the film industry. Mel Brooks' 1974 Young Frankenstein can be seen as appealing to the younger audience and does a commentary towards the cultural shift the U.S. was undergoing. The 70s gave rise to the sexual revolution, a period in time that challenged the general population's preconceived notions regarding sexuality, gender roles, and sexual practices. Women, predominantly, went against traditional norms, demanding more agency during this time alongside women's rights movements. In an article published by CNN titled, The Sex Freak Out of the 1970s, it states, quote, The 1970s was all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but arguably, it was the sex part that had the most enduring and profound effect on American society. Women liberated themselves in the bedroom and loosened norms around sex. In 1960, half of 19-year-old women who were unmarried had not yet had sex, but... By the late 1980s, two-thirds of all women had done the deed by age 18. The movements of the 1970s were much more about cultural triumphs than they were about legal and political changes, end quote. While the film Young Frankenstein is a parody and mostly focuses on the comedic retelling of the original, it also contains elements that can be perceived as reflecting the historical context of the sexual revolution. The portrayal of sexuality and provocative language is one of many. The inclusion of a predominant female character ties in with this idea. Suggestive remarks and sexual innuendos challenged traditional sexual norms and were foreign compared to the original theatrical release, as well as the book. One of the main characters, Inga, is a representation of a sexually liberated and self-assured woman who challenges societal expectations. This principle doesn't only apply to her, as there are other characters in the film that do the same. However, she is the most prominent. Some scenes that showcase this sexual desire could be... The weakness of the parts formed a great hindrance to my speed. I resolved, therefore, to make the creature of a gigantic stature. Of course. That would simplify everything. In other words, his veins... His feet, his hands, his organs would all have to be increased in size. Exactly. He would have an enormous Schwanstücke. That goes without saying. Oof. He's going to be very popular. Here I come. This is the moment. Well, dear, are you ready? Yes, Doctor. Elevate me. Now? Right here? Yes, yes. Raise the platform. Oh, the platform. Oh, that, yeah, yes. Compare this to the original novel and the original movie, 
also taking into consideration how much more of a role the female characters plays in this theatrical adaptation. It is safe to make the conclusion that outside factors such as the historical context at the time had influence on Mel Brooks' film. New historicism goes on to prove once more how this text is a product of that time era. Surrounded by the events which were transpiring during the 1970s regarding the sexual revolution, the film enforces the idea of challenging social norms and goes out of its way to make as obvious as possible. The last adaptation I'd like to talk about is the most modern adaptation of Frankenstein. In fact, it only exists in conceptualization because the work has not been published, but the director's ideas are still present, which is more than enough to apply a new historicism lens. 2023's The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster, directed by Bomani J. Story, is centered around the idea of race and gender, being that the main character is a version of Victor Frankenstein from the original. Viseria is a female African-American protagonist serving as the anti-hero in the movie. After witnessing the sudden and brutal death of her brother, Viseria embarks on a journey fueled by resentment and sorrow to bring him back to life. In contrast to Mary Shelley's Victor Frankenstein, who is fueled by curiosity and ambition, this shows a switch in tone and atmosphere. Analyzing this from a new historicist lens regarding the issue at hand in modern day society shows us why the director chose to go the route of being a serious film. Dealing with racism and injustice is serious. Bomani J. Story intentionally chose this route to emphasize the gravity of the situation. The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster is a social commentary about the challenges black women face in today's society, being considered an oppressed minority. Quote, it engages not only with the horror of the body and the death that consumes it, but the horror that a young black girl goes through just trying to live and ultimately thrive in a society that tries its hardest to stifle her, and tells a poignant story of coping with police brutality, gun violence, gangs, and the way even the education system isn't there to help black children in all of it, end quote, according to a film review published by Kate Sanchez. Using new historicism, we can see why now of all times it's important to bring up the social injustice occurring every day. Bringing awareness to something of this nature will inform and educate people on the problem we, as a society, have to fix. Similarly to the adaptations discussed in this video, this film is a social commentary on the current social state of the U.S. Black-on-black -black crime is high, police brutality against the black community continues to be a common occurrence, despite numerous times as seen in the countless court cases such as Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Eric Gardner, to name a few. The main character, Viseria, is most likely a representation of the African American community, how the community faces racial prejudice and discrimination even in modern day. The main character also represents the feelings the African American community has towards these issues and is a display of emotions expressing their anger and sorrow. All works of literature and film are products of specific time periods and influenced by the social, political, and cultural environment. New historicism allows us to explore how Frankenstein adaptations tie into the time period it was made. Perhaps a revolution was an occurrence, and it's important to take into consideration when analyzing a book in its entirety. By doing this, we can uncover any underlying meaning, themes, or messages the author or director made, whether it be subconsciously or consciously.